So I take this opportunity to welcome Ritka Tyagi, ma'am, who is the founder of Learning Jar India and uh, co leader of GEG Pune and Maharashtra. I welcome you on board, ma'am. It's a pleasure to have you with us on this live webinar where we would like to understand how you use uh, different platforms to teach in your school or probably online sessions, or these days we have been experiencing hybrid uh, learning model. We, all the teachers out there, we have started using hybrid models and most of the teachers have started taking online sessions. So ma'am, I would like to know from you to what extent uh, you think that hybrid learning or so to say uh, online learning is the need of an hour. We really need to adapt ourselves to these changing educational trends. Hello, Emeka, and thank you so, so much for such a warm welcome. And thank you thank for you introducing me to this tool and uh, this software. Uh, having said that, the last two years have been quite difficult, I'm sure, for all the teachers. We have experienced online learning, offline learning, and now hybrid learning as well. And there were a lot of tools which all the educators have learned so far. A uh, few of the tools were uh, quite easy to learn. A few tools were a little bit difficult, but we all sailed through this, these difficult times. Uh, as a math teacher, I personally feel that it's very important to connect with the students because most of the students, they have this phobia regarding math subject. Oh, yes. And I must say that I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but math is something, it's, it's basically something which is integrated in our day-to-day -day life. So as a math teacher, my whole purpose is to simplify the complex topics and to present it in such a way that my students can connect with it and with the real life examples as well. So okay. I came across this tool, my view board, and I saw all the features, I applied it in my class and I really loved it. So wow. quickly, I'll just walk you through, uh, can you just enable screen sharing for me, please? Sure, ma'am. Yes, ma So as a math teacher, um, I'll just share my screen. So as a math teacher, and especially when I'm teaching senior classes, like 10th and 12th, my uh, like aim is to create a resource so that when I'm explaining the topic in the class, I start right from the basic, I create a resource, and then I present it in the class. And later on, I share it with my kids, maybe on Google Classroom. And now Viewboard has also come up with the classroom concept. So I try to share it with them so that they can refer it back later on and they can come up with their queries and doubts as well. So, so ma'am, do you, do you find this application, do you find this software to be really easy uh, to be understood by teachers, by students? And how do you see there's a difference in terms of teaching and, uh, you know, uh, how do your kids take, uh, take it? Do they enjoy learning from such tools or they, they were very comfortable with the blackboard and whiteboard concept? They absolutely loved it. I mean, I just wish uh, I was a student and my teacher uh, should have used all these tools with me. And the best part about this is uh, it's all under one platform. Like I don't have to download different applications. It is easily integrated with Google Drive and Google Classroom as well. I don't have to use another software for screen recording or for taking screenshots. I can directly do it from here. Uh, for geometry, especially the topic that we have taken up for today, uh, I used to, you know, uh, literally take a compass or a protractor and I had to show it in the class like this is how you have to hold it. But using like my view board, it has become so easy to make them understand the geometry concepts in an online class and in offline class also these days, which uh, I'm going to show how you can use it. And it's not just using as it as a whiteboard, but also you can create PPT, you can present it in the class, and you can also assess your students using whiteboard. So Absolutely. there are a lot of features which, uh, like, you know, and this AI pen, so I, I'm really bad at drawing things. So using <laughs> this AI, AI pen, uh, you can literally draw and the shape can be integrated into your whiteboard. So there are a lot of features which I'm sure the teachers are going to like and we are going to make it an interactive session. So I would request all the participants to please write their questions or whatever their feedback they have in the chat box so that we can and Himika, ma'am and I can take it up. Definitely, ma'am. 
Yes. So, ma'am, let's get started. How you use my view board to make your sessions interactive. I would also like to uh, mark uh, and state here that my view board is a software that can be used for offline learning, for online learning, as well as hybrid learning. So it is not only a solution for a hybrid or an online session. Rather, if you are teaching in your school, this software can be used there as well. No matter whichever system do you use, you can use it on IFP panels, on desktops, on laptops, any software that your uh, school is currently using. This application, this tool can easily be downloaded to your uh, platform, to your system, and you can start using this. So it is it is a one stop solution for online, offline, as well as blended learning. So true. So let me just walk you through the basic tools that we have first. Uh, this is the toolbar that you can see on my left side if you want. And if it is convenient for you, you can move it to the right side using these arrow keys as well. I prefer it on my left side, so I'm going to keep it here. The first tool that you have over here is to use uh, to switch between the Windows desktop and whiteboard. Right now, I'm using the app, okay, which I have downloaded, and then I'm using it, but you can use the whiteboard online as well. The second one over here is to present your presentation wireless and to use it in a video conference. The third one is my favorite one, to take a screenshot and screen record also. So what I generally do is I record my PPT and I'm explaining it and then I can share it with my students as well. So they can hear it, they can view it at their own pace. The next one is whatever you're doing here on the whiteboard, you can open your previous presentations or your previous work, you can save it and you can export it as well, which we are going to talk about later. This is something which is, a magic box and it contains all the tools, everything that a teacher can ask for. Next over here is the embedded browser through which you can embed any web page or any uh, resource that you feel is important for the students, which is ad free completely and is prepared, keeping the students in mind. Over here, this hand means to move the canvas. So I can click on it and I can move the canvas. This one is to select something that you have created. The next one is a pen. So you can color, you can choose different colors or you get various options to like, you know, use different strokes or whatever you want. And this is the AI pen that I was talking about. So let's say if I create something, a star or something, and as I said, I'm really bad at drawing. So it creates a star for me and I can choose from here that this is what I want. So this is an AI pen that we can use. Right now, I'm gonna go with a normal pen only. This is an eraser, basic tool that we have. There are shapes then which we can use, 2D shapes, then we have 3D shapes also, which we can use from here. We have lines and arrows. We can create tables like this. So it becomes really very easy for a math teacher to present the data, not only in the senior grades, grades or in the middle grades, but also in the pre-primary and primary level as well. Then we have the text box option here, which when you click here, you can write the text and you can edit it. You can choose the font style. You can choose the font size. You can make it bold, italic, and alignment can also be done. Then there is the undo button and there is the redo button. So these are the basic tools that we have. And now we are going to deep dive into all these tools so that we are going to understand in a better way. Starting with the topic that we have taken up for the day is math. Today's uh, chapter that we are going to say, uh, we are going to learn is angles. So to begin with, I would first like to change the background and make it a little bit more attractive. So this is the option from where we can, we can change the background, you click here, and not just for math, but for English and for other subjects also, you can choose the background. If you're not happy with these background options, then you can go to my view board originals, click on this, give it some time, and you can get a lot of options from here as well. So let's say I want to choose something from math, if I can get it, uh, I really like this one. Now it will ask you whether you want to apply it to all the pages to apply to this page only or cancel it. So I think I'll go with apply to all pages. 
and done. I'll give it a heading. Since I'm creating a teacher-created resource, which I can share with my students later as well. So I'm gonna give it a name. Make it bold, change the font style from here. Make it a little bit bigger. And this will be my first slide that I'm going to create. Now we can move to the second slide by adding a slide from here, this plus option, add a new page. You click on it and a new page will be added. Now from these arrow keys, I can browse through the previous page and go to the next page as well. Now on the second slide, I generally write down the learning objectives so that even I keep in my mind that these are the objectives that I have to achieve through this lesson. So I can choose the text box option again from here and I can write all the learning objectives for my class. I've already written it so to save the time. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. So these are the learning objectives that I want to achieve with the help of this lesson. Now, again, I'm gonna add the next slide. And as I can see, the number of the slides can be viewed from here. So this is the third number slide. So here, the, since I am just introducing the angles topic, maybe let's say in grade seven, I want to test out whether my students who have just passed from grade six, they know about angles or not. Because mostly in grade three, four, five, we discuss about angles. So I want to get an understanding about how my students know. So I'm going to click on this magic box. There are various options over here. So there is this throw option where you can throw a question to them. They are going to click a picture and then send it to you. Or maybe you can pop quiz, use this pop quiz option. I'm going to go ahead with polls. I'll click on this poll option. Now over here, I get various sub options like multiple choice. Do you want to create a true false? Do you want to give them as a rating option or a free format or voting or random draw? So let's say if you have 20 students in a class and you want only one student to answer. So you can use this random draw and ask one student to answer as well. I'm going to go ahead with multiple choice. I'll write my question. How much do you know about angles? So this gives me an understanding about my students as well. Option one, I know a lot. Option two, I know a little. Option number three, I know nothing. So these are the options. I don't want the fourth option. I'm, I can delete it from here and add these options as well. So all these options are considered as right. I can choose the time from here. So I want them to answer in one minute only. I want the question to be seen and this is done. So I'll click on this tick, tick box. So my question is how much do you know about angles? I know a little, I know a lot, I know nothing. Now I want my students to join this. So what I can do is I can share this QR with them and ask my students to join. So I would request all of you to I can see the attendees from here who all have joined. I'll just give it a moment. Ma'am, let's just wait for everyone to just scan and give it a try. Sure. So once the students have finished this poll, I can see it from here that how many students have finished and how many attendees are there. Also, this is a nice activity for the students who are online. And if you're still continuing with the hybrid mode, so the students, those who are online, they can scan using their mobile device. If the students are sitting right in front of you, you can again create, uh, let's say, 
a text box and you can write your question over there. Ma'am, very well said. This is how we can, uh, you know, draft a lot of questions, be it multiple choice question, true and false, or any kind of a question that we want to ask our uh, learners. It can be in the form of, uh, you know, as ma'am suggested, by starting the session in the form of an activity during the session or probably at the end of the session to understand the understanding of the students so we can draft it in any format absolutely right ma'am i i think that's a great way to start the session too in fact you can use it as an exit poll as well so you can ask your exactly. students whether they were able to understand the topic or not or whether yes. they would like to revisit it again Correct. uh okay so i think teacher got a fair idea of how to use poll now on the next slide what i generally do is to start with the topic so let's say I want to tell them what are angles, the basic definition of it. So I can make this a bit bold. And since I have already written the definition, and I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Now, over here, I've given them an overview. On the next slide, you will watch a video on angles and their relationship to each other. Pay close attention. To the definition of parallel and perpendicular lines and complementary and supplementary angles. So this is an overview so that the students, they get prepared that on the next slide, they're going to find a video and the basic definition of angles is given here in this slide. So now let's say I want to move to the next page. I can go from here. Now, I'm as I uh, told that I am going to show a video now. Now, how to add a video? This is really very interesting i go to this magic box again you must be able to see this youtube icon i click on this i search for an for a video math and tip i love the videos angles i give the keywords i click enter and this is the video that i was looking for yes i want this i can play it i can see whether this is the actual video or not and the moment so yes, this is it. I'm going to double click on it and the video is here. Now I can resize it, close this, resize it the way I want it, make it bigger, make it smaller, play it. And the best part is there is no ad over here. So all the videos are ad free and you can present it in the class. I'll show you how it works. You can see the video. You that's formed forward it. square corners we can discuss about it in the class if you're using zoom then you can annotate on the screen as well and you can or you can use the pen from here and tell them that this is how it works now on the next slide i'm going to show you an activity since they have watched the video now i want them to do an activity so that i get an idea that all the students have watched the video in real or not or were they paying attention to the class so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to magic box if you can see there's this sticky note option here i can choose a sticky note and this is where a sticky note is going to be i can choose the text option here i can add a text here or i can simply write it i can choose a text option from here as well now, I want to create a matching activity for my students, a set of angles that add to 90 degree. So I want them to answer that what is the set of angle which adds up to 90 degree is called. Now, once this is done, I can add more sticky notes and I can create a matching pair activity for my students. I can simply just drag and drop it the way I want. I can make the size bigger and I can keep the text so that they can see it. Now I'll add another sticky activity, sticky note. Let's say if this is in red color, I want to give them the answers. Now, once they have discussed, I'll choose the text option, write it, let's say a set of angles. I just want to make it a bit complicated for them. I've given acute angles, click here, drag and drop it where you want. You can make the size bigger. So let's say I'll go with this and I place it here. 
Now another question in yellow color, I want to write it, choose the text option. Then angles less than 90 degree. I click here, choose, choose the arrow, drag and drop it, make the size bigger. I'm just giving you an example. You can use the sticky notes as in how you want and keep it here. And I'm going to keep the option. Let's say I've already copied and pasted here. So documentary angles, another sticky note, make it in red color, text option, paste, and making the size bigger and keeping it here. So just now I've created two pairs. You can create as many pairs as you want. Now ask the students randomly to give the answers. Like, Himika, can you tell me the first answer? Ma'am, I think the, a set of angles that add to 90 degrees is complementary angles. Perfect. Who said that you're having a maths phobia? <laughs> so, <laughs> we can choose a line from here and we can add and match it like this. You can match the similar options once the students have answered. So like this, you can create a lot of activities using sticky notes as well. Now, I want to add a question for my students. So I'll show you how to add an image. Now I want them to tell me. What this angle is, I've already downloaded an image from Google. So I'll go to this magic box option again, go to this image search. If you want, you can search for an image here as well. If you want to write, let's say, I want them to answer a cute angle. So you'll get a lot of options here. So just double click. I'll search for something which doesn't have a name basically. If you want, you can add your own images as well. You can just directly go from here. I have kept a picture on my desktop. So I'll click on desktop option. And this is the image that I want to add. You can resize it. And you can ask your students that name the angle which has been shown here. Once they have answered, you can write. Now, if the pen you see is too big, you can change the color as well. You can change, uh, make it to green. Yes. yes, and then you can change the pen size as well. So you can write that this is an obtuse angle. So like this, you can do an activity in the class. It's not that the teacher is going to speak all the time. The students are going to be an integral part as well. So make sure that the students are participating in the class and they find it interactive. Now you can add another slide and this is where the main fun happens. I'll show you how to use the various construction tools. So you go to magic box again, you go to these tool option. There are so many, things which are available here, which a teacher can use. You can add a clock, you can add a ruler, you can add all these geometry tools like protractor, dice. So let's say if I want to teach probability, I'll add this dice and it's here. So I'll just delete one. Now I can add the number of dice like this. I can just click on it and give them a random number. I can talk about probability. If the uh, students whom I'm teaching are from pre-primary or primary level, I can tell them that this is a number. Let's say this one, this is a three digit number. And now you have to write the number name. So one, five and four, write the number name for this or arrange them in descending order or in ascending order. So you can do a lot of activities for pre-primary kids as well using my viewport. Now going back to the magic box, I'll just close this. Now I want to show you how you can use a ruler. So I'll take a ruler, I'll take a protractor and I'll take the compass. I'll show you how to do the construction part. Before that, I want to delete this. So I'll use the eraser and I'll clear my screen. So first I'll show you how you can use a ruler for construction. I'll just take it here and I can just delete it. So now what you can do is you can make the ruler bigger or smaller as per the size, whichever you want is convenient for you. By clicking on these arrows, you can just remove the scale or you can change it as well. 
right now I want to go with this blank ruler. Now, if you want to draw a line, just click on the pen, start drawing the line like this. It will draw a straight line, whichever length you want. Now, remove the ruler. Now, let's say you want to draw an angle using a protractor. So you'll tell the student that bring the protractor, place it over here. And let's say if I want to draw an angle of uh, 110 degree. So I can mark 110 degree using pencil. I'll put a dot. I can rotate the protractor like this. I can keep it aside. Now I want to draw the angle. So I'll just join this and this point together. Now I want to check whether this was right or not. I'll bring it back again. I can put this as zero degree, keep it straight, place it over here, and I can show it to my students that this is of 110 degree using a protractor and a ruler. So the construction becomes very easy. You don't actually have to hold the protractor in your hand and show it that this is how the protractor looks. The construction uh, looks very, very easy because of it. Now, if you want, you can just erase it. Now I'll show how to use the compass and the ruler again. So we'll go to the magic toolbox again. So sorry. We'll go there and we'll click on this. We'll get the ruler again. Now we'll draw a line using the pen. This is my line. I'll remove it. Now let's say I want to draw using a protractor. I'll bring my protractor, I'll adjust the radius, I'll bring it here, place it over here. Now using the pencil, I can create an arc. Just click on the pencil and draw it here, drag it. Now place your protractor needle here and using a pencil, draw in another arc. So this becomes very easy and construction looks so fun. Now I can draw an arrow and draw an angle through this arc like this. Now, if you want to tell your students which angle is this, tell me the measurement. You can bring the protractor again, place it over here, and you can say that this is a 60 degree angle. So I'm sure the teachers are finding it fun and easy. Please throw in your questions in the chat box. Let me know if you're facing any problem and if there is any feature, you would like me to explain it again. I would love to do that. Likewise, you can also use, you go to tools, you can also write your math equations. Uh, you also have a calculator here. If you want to show it to your kids, you can write it. Let's say if I want to write a math equation, I can write here, uh, say three upon two plus five upon three is equals to X. So I can write my math equation so easily, click on insert, and my math equation will be here. So sorry, I'll just remove the extra things, select it. You can just remove it, or you can click on the cross also to remove the protractor. This is my math equation. I want to bring it here. And it's so easy to work on the math equations now. Now, if you want to select and if you want to delete something, Quickly select this area, click on delete, and this can be easily removed. You don't want the compass anymore, click on this cross and the compass will be removed. Click on the cross here on the ruler and the ruler can be removed as well. You select this again and you can delete it. Or you can lock it as well. If you don't want this equation to move around, you can lock it from here. So I hope all the teachers are finding construction easy now. I'll show you one more thing which we can do. We go to math tools again. Now we can draw the Cartesian plane so easily. We can drag and drop it. We can draw lines here. First, we can select it. Take it over here. I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll just... squeeze it together. Yes. Using these arrows, we can make it big so that the students who are sitting at the back of the class and if you're presenting it in the class can also see. These days I'm also explaining coordinate geometry in my uh, 10th graders. So 
uh, it's, it has become very easy to explain where the point is located and to explain the whole concept about coordinate geometry. I don't have to draw for each and every question. I don't have to draw the axis and I don't have to write all the uh, labels again and again. Now, using the ruler or the eraser, you can erase these lines if you don't want it anymore. I'll tell you how fun you can make it. So you go to magic tools again, you search for an image. I would like to search for an emoji. So I write an emoji here. Now let's say if I want this one, I'll double click, cross it. So I've got an emoji here. Now I'll show you how fun it can be. So using this option here, I can make my graph white. I can bring this emoji here, make it a bit smaller like this. Now I'm going to place my emoji here and the question will be in which quadrant do you think the emoji lies now? I would request the teachers to answer in the chat box. Quadrant. Yeah, in which quadrant? I'm sure the math teachers have joined today. Okay. Thank you so much, Amit, sir. Yes, it's the first quadrant. So we can... I told you I'm not good in math. See. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> good. Right. <laughs> so, not teachers. so we yeah. can just place the emoji here or whatever we want you want to place an ant an elephant whatever you want you place it in the quadrant and ask them in which quadrant does it lie now if you want to make a point or you want to show a point you use the pen option here or a line so i want to go with the pen option and i am drawing a point let's say on this one so i can ask my students to tell me in which like what is the point here so it's minus eight comma minus two i can simply use different colors also for marking my points now if you feel the the grids in the background and over here they are uh, like you know the students are going to get confused you can simply change the background by going back here and you can make it white as well so there are so many options that we can do. So now it becomes more clearer. And I realized I had drawn it wrong. So I'll erase it. I'll show it again. So using the pen, I want to use a green color and I want to mark the point here, this one. So I can ask my students to name the coordinates. So it's six and minus three. And like this, we can show the bar graph, we can show the histograms, we can talk about the whole coordinate geometry using the view board. Now, once we have done this, and uh, I'm sure the teachers are finding it easy and very convenient to use, but let me tell you the best part about my view Sonic, which I had uh, saved for the last. So if you feel that uh, you know, you're not getting time to create a teacher-created resource or you're not getting time to do all these preparations for your class and you have to teach a topic in like you know, one or two days, so what you can do is, I'll show you, I'll share my screen again. You go to the online portal of my view board, you sign in from here, So you need to first sign up as a teacher. Since I have already signed up, I can see the home uh, page here. Now on the home page, I have a lot of options. Like I can connect this view board with my classroom. Like I can add all my students there, right, Emika? And then yes. the teacher can share the resources. I this was the whiteboard option which I was showing right now. We also have clips like so ma'am. I would like to mention here all the Apple users or any uh, like users who have been using different platforms uh, apart from Chrome and Android, they can simply go on our web page and use whiteboard from here. So all the features that they have been uh, seeing right now, they would be able to use all of them. True. Uh, okay, so we also have clips. So when I clip, uh, click on this option, clicks. If you just ask me to wait a little bit. Meanwhile, I'll show you. We have something called originals, which is my favorite feature of my view board. 
Now over here you have resources which are pre-created by the teachers from all over the world and they are amazing. You have uh, resources for festivals, you have resources for English, for science, for math, uh, for social studies. I'll show you all the list of subjects. So we have art and humanities, we have geography, holidays and reading and writing as well, for STEAM subjects as well, which is currently in demand. Now, I would like to search for all the math resources. So I click on this math option. I can select the grades as well. So whichever grade you're looking for, you can select the grades. You can look for like video assisted learning or if you're looking for online games, you can search accordingly, filter it out. Now, let's say I want to go ahead with this Halloween themed angle since we are talking about it. I'll double click on it. I'll open it. I'll see the preview, like what all activities are there, which are going to be useful. I can play the video from here. We need to use this instrument, which is called a protractor. We need to place the straight part of the protractor over one of the sides of the angle, making the vertex and the central point of the protractor meet. So you don't have to do anything. All the explanation is done. The graphics have been uh, inserted. The activities are there. Uh, it, it, it's like a complete package, which is there for all the teachers and they don't have to uh, prepare their own resources. Now, what you have to do here is, suppose I have approved of this activity and I want to use it for my class. So I can just simply download it from here. Now, after it gets downloaded, I can open this activity in my whiteboard, which I had just shown. So I can view it from there. Provided the student should have my whiteboard, uh, like the app that should be installed in their Manual. computer. Yeah. Yes. So, but I would suggest as a teacher, you can always screen share and always show the activities and you can ask the students to do it on your screen as well or tell the answers. So, once it gets downloaded, you can open it. I'll show you how it's done. So I'm going to open it and I'll share my screen again. So this is how it's going to look. You can see all the pages here. If you move on to the second page, we have the YouTube video, which we can play in the class. We already have the background. If you want, you can get the activities now. So let's say this is an activity where they have to tell the angles. Now let's play it with the teachers. Uh, teachers, can you please answer in the chat box? What are the first, first second? One. Okay, I think then I should try. Okay, what's the first angle here? I just started receiving the answers. Okay, Chetna ma'am has answered a cute, right and obtuse. Meghna ma'am has also answered Amit sir, right, as always. So let's say this one is acute. This one is right. And this one is obtuse. So you can ask your students to be an active participant in the class and you can give them this activity and they can answer. Now, moving ahead, you have another activity here, which you can play with your students. You again, they have to answer the type of angles and the theme is Halloween here, so it's a bit scary. Now, going ahead, this is an activity where they have to match the angles. So we can match it by asking them the answers. So what do you think the first one is going to be? change the color of the arrow to white. Teachers, what do you think the first angle is? Okay, I think it's obtuse. No, I'm not sure. Think again. I wish I had such lessons in my uh, school. <laughs> Even I, I would that. have been a better student then. <laughs> Okay, so I've started receiving the answers. 
so we have the answer is right. So I'm gonna go to this. This is the right angle. Absolutely right. Now, likewise, we can ask the students to match the different figures and the names of the angles as well. Moving ahead. Again, we have an activity where they have to look at the branches and they have to tell which type of angle is it. Is it acute? Is it right? Or is it obtuse? And happy Halloween. So now let's say if I don't want this last slide, what I can do is I can click here on this page management menu. Click here. And from here, whichever page you don't want the students to read or to look into, you can simply delete it by clicking on it. And you can delete this, like you're going to click on this option with a cross on it. So click on delete page, click on yes. I, I don't want this one again, so click on this. So I just want the activities, I want the introduction slide, and I want the video. So it's ready now. I'll just go to this folder option here. Now I can simply save it. I can export it on my PC. I can download it as a PDF, as a PPT. Uh, what else? Uh, what are the options, Himika ma? So we, we can save it and uh, export it into PNG format, PPT, yes. P, uh, uh, PDF, and IWB. Perfect. So a lot of time is saved. I mean, we are getting all these... Uh, pre-created resources and a gift hamper sort of away from the teachers who have already worked hard. And if you feel that, uh, you know, you're not so creative and you want some amazing activities, so you can always browse through the originals and find some amazing resources from there. Now I'll take you back again to the website. You can browse through more contents. And this, these are the clips that I was talking about. So clips are the videos that you can find useful for your classes. You can create and save your own playlist. Like, let's say I can go to the collection. I want math videos. So I can go here in the math section. I can select the videos according to their age range. I can set, sort it by the like updated date or whether it has an attachment or not. I can sort it by the keywords. So let's say I want everything related to angles. I'll write angles here, click on search, and I got my particular resource. Now what I can do is I can click on this plus option and I can save it in my playlist or in my collection and I can view it later along with my students. So this has a collection of 11 videos all curated together. So it becomes really very easy to take online classes and this works well with the hybrid and with the offline classes in school as well. So far, do we have any questions? I think ma'am has made it very easy and uh, very interesting for all of us. Teachers, if any one of you have a question, please feel free to ask. Ritika ma'am and I would be looking forward to answer to all your queries. Okay, so the last thing that I would like to discuss today is this web uh, embedded browser where you can search any resource. So there we have Educom, Baiju's, we have Extra Marks, and we have so many uh, things that we can search and we can provide to the students. So again, you can search something from the originals directly from here as well. You can search a clip also directly from there. So you go to this icon and you can search. Let's say if I write angles here, I get all the resources and there are no ads. So you get everything about the angles directly from here and you can simply embed by clicking and you can just use any image or anything that you want. You can simply embed it using this browser as well. Okay. We have a question. Can we draw graphs yes. of different different functions in it? Yes, so we can. You just have to go through the originals. There are a lot of uh, graphs which are given over there. There are videos because I was going through the content. So there were certain uh, topics which were given about functions and their graphs as well. Or if you want, you can create your own resource using the Cartesian plane as well. If you want, you can add your images or you can add a video which is related to the same topic. Do we have any other question? 
I think, ma'am, you've made it very easy for all of us. And that's one of the reason we, most of the things have been uh, well understood well. Uh, there's one more question, which is, do you use it in physical classroom or in school? Ma'am, would you like to answer? Yes, we do uh, use it. Like, I'll, I'll show you. So generally, when we are teaching in the physical classroom, we have students who are sitting at the back and who are not able to view the board easily. Uh, so if they want, they can just, uh, you know, take the resource back. So we can share it on Google Classroom or we can share it on Google Drive as well for those students who are not able to understand it in the class. Uh, apart from that, we also have smart board and we also have uh, like a projector on the screen so we can connect it. We can download the app directly there as well on the smart board and we can start our explanations. Instead of using the normal whiteboard or the blackboard, we can uh, do all our explanations using my viewboard as well. Yes, uh, Ritika ma'am, to add to this, uh, I would also like to answer it here. So my view both as stated uh, in the beginning, it is a software that helps us to use multiple features for designing and for delivery. So as a teacher, it would help me in content creation as well as delivering the session beautifully, where I can use the various options like annotation, discussing it, uh, using pictures, videos, etc., to make my session interesting. Now, this platform, the software, can be used in any uh, any device. It can be uh, the uh, smart board, which school already has a smart board that a school has, IAP panel, or uh, in case uh, school uh, does not have such uh, you know options, I'm sure there would be computer labs. There would be some resource where they would have access to uh, the uh, computer or a laptop. So a teacher can take these sessions there as well, right? Also, there are some school these days where students have their tabs, they have their smartphones where they have started learning from where. So students can also download this software and like ma'am asked us uh, questions in the beginning, right? Uh, it was a multiple choice question. So as a, stu as a teacher, ma'am can show me uh, a question and as a student, when I, in my school, I have been asked to use tabs and different gadgets to study. I can definitely use that gadget and um, you know, uh, uh, answer the question. So it works hand in hand. So the schools uh, that have aids, that have uh, gadgets available and that have uh, resources like Wi-Fi throughout and all that, they can definitely use it. In case it is an offline model, it can again be used if using any desktop or laptop that is available in the school. In terms of hybrid learning where teacher is taking a session and some of the students are attending it from their place. Again, it can work as a beautiful model because there the a teacher can involve both the models, that is the online as well as the offline model. So I hope I have answered the question. Thank you, uh, Falguni ma'am. Uh, anybody else who would like to raise any other question? So I must thank you, Ritika ma'am. You have made it very easy for us to understand all the tools that are available on my view board. And I'm sure this would encourage all the educators to uh, at least try their hands on the software like this and make their staff, uh, sessions engaging and interactive. Thank you so much, Ritika ma'am. Also, uh, everyone, as discussed, uh, there is a participation certificate for all. So all those people who have joined this session, I request you all to be part of our uh, web page community. The, uh, the, uh, this community would help you to identify different um, uh, ways of using this platform. So now and then we do uh, post different, um, we do post different, uh, 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 you know, uh, Post, we do uh, post different videos every day and the, we also talk about the different uh, advancements that we are working on. 
right and so all this uh, you know this platform will help you to be connected with us to understand what are the different ways how you can use a, a simple tool let's say ma'am uh, taught us a beautiful activity using sticky notes using similar kind of sticky notes what are the different activities i can plan so i would say it can be a one stop solution for you to understand what all you can do and uh, you know to make your sessions engaging and also how you can make your sessions interactive using my view board so i would really request i have uh, provided the link in the chat box i request all of you to be part of our community all those people who are part of the community and have joined today uh, would be getting their uh, certification uh, within uh, next 48 hours That is amazing. And, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Anything anyone so would like easy. to ask a question before we end the session? Good evening, uh, Megha, ma'am. I'm Shima Khashkil. It was really interesting session. I must appreciate. May I know the usual limitations? If I'm going to uh, download this app and access in the, uh, this app uh, through single time download how many students or people they can access this or individually they need to uh, download and log in create the session so ma'am it is just like any other software that we use so if you you if you download this software on your application or, or in on your device you can access it number of times for any other person to join uh, to use it they would have to download the software on their system for example if i want to use it on my laptop i need to download it on my laptop if i i want to access it through my phone i will have to download it on my phone through play store so uh, once a software has been downloaded then there is no limitation you can access it any number of times as per your need thank and you just to add one more uh, question that is yes please go ahead Shritika, just to add to that it's basically a whiteboard tool mostly which is used so the teacher can always share the screen or if you're teaching in a school you can always use on the main screen like the, the projector that you have in your class the smart board and there you can use it if the students are using it at home then they need to download the software in their own laptop or mobile devices that they have there are certain features which are available offline also so i was going through the portal and i realized there are certain features which do not even require the wi-fi so once you have downloaded the app you can use it without the wi-fi connection i'm, I'm right uh, Come yes. Yes. So apart from the That's premium great feature, yes. Apart from the premium features, most of the features would be available for you to use uh, in the offline mode as well. So to download this software, I think some, uh, Sir has asked for the link. So to download this software, you can go to myviewboard.com. Uh, Ritka, ma'am, would you like to show us how we can download sure. it? Sure. So. We have to go to the home page that I had shown. First, you have to sign up as a teacher. Then you have to go to this whiteboard. If you want to download the whiteboard, there are options to download for Windows, for Android phone, and for whiteboard online. If you want to use it just online, you don't want to download it like a Jamboard, Google Jamboard that we use. So it's an online thing that we use. So we can download from here as well. And if you want to use it for windows you can download using this click on this and this application will be downloaded so it's very easy can i repeat this process again through uh, play store how can i uh, download and uh, go for the signing first few so ma'am okay. if you're using uh, yeah this is for if you want to download it from your mobile uh, on your laptop or system in case you want to download it on your uh, uh, mobile phone, please go to Play Store. There's an application by the name of Companion and My View Board. So you can download both these applications. They, uh, they would help you to do all these features in your mobile phone itself. So there you can annotate, you can ask questions, you can create the content. Every feature that we have been talking about here is available on your smartphone as well you had a great learning time with Ritika ma'am 
and we look forward to see you all using my view food and sharing your experiences on our channel on our community page thank you so much have a great evening ahead